Welcome back to the Meandering Mina YouTube channel, and today we're going to visit a few of Scotland's most magical locations. We'll visit some of my favorites in Orkney, Isle of Skye, the Borders, and the Central Belt. We're starting with the most beautiful private castle I've been to in Scotland, Flores Castle. You can find this absolutely stunning castle with magnificent grounds and gardens in the Borders near Kelso. Even if you aren't especially into castles, Flores Castle is certainly worth visiting. The expression, you've seen one, you've seen them all, really does not apply to Flores in the slightest. The castle dates to the 18th century, which is the 1700s for you that might get confused, and there is such a magical undertone to the whole experience. Even though this castle isn't as old or historically significant as others in Scotland, such as Stirling and Edinburgh, it really is architecturally impressive nonetheless. Whilst we were here, Disney was actually having an event on the castle grounds, so the magic of Flores Castle really is understood and appreciated by all. And now some administrative things to consider. There are two different rates for admission. One is just to enter the grounds and peruse the gardens, and one is to walk around inside. At first, we were unsure if we wanted to walk around inside, but I assure you, it is money well spent. Filming and photography isn't allowed inside the castle, as it's still the private residence of the family, so I can only hope to inspire you through my retelling of the treasures inside. Flores Castle boasts beautiful books, mesmerizing portraits, skillfully fashioned furniture, artifacts and relics from near and far, beautiful curtains and tapestries, gorgeous collections of bone china, porcelain and silver, an impressive collection of paintings, sculptures, smithing and carpentry, and so much more that it's honestly impossible to describe or explain. We had only planned on stopping at Flores for a couple of hours, but we honestly should have made it a full day on the itinerary as there was so much to see between the castle, the grounds, the gardens, the shop, the walking trails, and the cafe. It was truly an unbelievable experience, and I'm hard pressed to find a castle that comes close to it in both its splendor and sustainable stewardship of the estate. If you love beautiful things, be it art, flowers, landscaping, cuisine, architecture, design, anything. Flores Castle is the embodiment of beauty and magic in a plethora of different forms. Plus, it does really look like it's out of a Disney film, doesn't it? I would even argue that it's more impressive than a Disney castle, but either way, it's no wonder that Disney was having an event there. The magic is palpable. From Flores Castle, we're now heading to a spot far less majestic, but with far more magic. This is Rymer Stone. Rymer Stone is near Melrose, also in the Scottish borders. It's a very unassuming stone marker with a pleasant viewpoint just beside, but we're here because the stone marks the location of a story. And here's where things get interesting. Thomas the Rymer fell asleep under a tree in this very spot. When he awoke, he spotted a beautiful lady on a dappled gray horse coming towards him. Much to his surprise, this woman was no ordinary lassie, but was in fact queen of the fairies. Our friend Thomas followed her to the land of the fairies, where he danced and frolicked and lived for three days. Or so he thought, but actually Thomas spent seven years away from our world in the land of the fairies. Legend has it that the Fairy Queen gifted Thomas with the power to speak the truth and see the future. Through fairy magic, Thomas once foretold that there would be a mighty bridge over the River Tweed visible from the exact spot of his encounter with the Queen of the Fairies. Whether by magic, luck, pure happenstance, or some other force, a bridge over the River Tweed is indeed visible from Rhymer's Stone viewpoint. Was it a self-fulfilling prophecy? You might encounter some fairies to tell you their side of the story whilst you're here. Legend says that the Queen of the Fairies told Thomas she's going to visit this spot again. With three days in the fairy realm being equal to seven years in our current world, who knows when she'll turn up next. Our next stop in our magical tour of Scotland is in the central belt near Falkirk, the Kelpies. The Kelpies live in Falkirk's Helix Park and have been around for less than a decade. 
Sculpted and designed by Andy Scott, these equine statues are visible from the M9 motorway, but definitely worth taking a detour off the main road. Our two Kelpies, Baron and Duke, are even more impressive when standing directly underneath. Their imposing figures carve out the sky above in a contrast of harsh cold steel, curved and molded by creativity and myth in the manner only an artist's touch could achieve. The Kelpies in Helix Park are physical embodiments of mythological creatures called Kelpies. These mythical beings were shape-shifting water-based spirits who often took the form of a horse, but were also known to take the form of man and woman, both young and old, curious and malicious. Mostly these stories were thought to act as warnings to keep children away from lochs and rivers to prevent them from accidentally falling in and drowning. But there are stories told worldwide of water horses and shape-shifting spirits hiding in the water. Are these merely tales of folklore or is there an element of truth? Next up is one of the most adorable and visually magical places I've ever been to. This is Manuela's Wee Bakery, Fairy Tale Kitchen, and the Fairy Tale Distillery. This little complex is owned by an adorable German couple who moved close to Kyle of LaCouche by the Isle of Skye. This is a family business in the term's greatest iteration. All of the buildings on the site were designed and built by the husband, who is obviously a masterful carpenter. The wife is a culinary genius, and the two of them fashioned their own fairy tale wonderland on their property. Their daughter also helps to run the business, and it's honestly a wonderful experience all around. Be sure to book ahead if you're visiting the fairy tale distillery to do a tasting. They make wickedly delicious rum, gin, absinthe, and more, all with spellbinding enchantment. This spot had been on my list for quite a while, and I was even more surprised at the creativity and attention to detail on the site when I went in person. Everything on the site is done with such excellence, especially the baked goods, but my favorite was the Mediterranean cookie. It's a savory pastry with sun-dried tomatoes, olives, and cheese. It's beautiful. The Nutella croissant are a must if you're a fan of Nutella, but the plum cookie is such a lovely sweet treat with a little bit of tartness from the plum which gives it a subtle zing. This is an overtly magical place and will leave visitors with some much needed magic. Our next spot is over the sea to sky. No, no, no. Sadly, we're not traveling through time just yet. <laughs> We're actually headed over the bridge to the Isle of Skye to explore two sites on the island, the Fairy Pools and the Fairy Glen. The Fairy Pools are towards the south of Skye. I visited here last autumn and this video just shows you a little bit of what Skye looks like in October. Still green, but with a lot more browns, yellows, and reds than you'd see in the spring and summertime. I think sky is beautiful year round. It definitely has more of a mystical rugged feel in the autumn and swimming in the fairy pools would be impossible in the autumn and winter months, despite it being quite popular in the summer. Nonetheless, the fairy pools are stunning no matter the season or the weather. Just come prepared with some waterproof shoes that you don't mind getting muddy. I wore welly boots and I was very happy with my choice of footwear. This is a great location for fans of waterfalls, and it's a scenic drive out to the fairy pools also. As long as you're prepared for wind and rain and weather that changes really quickly, you'll definitely enjoy your time at the fairy pools. Next up is the Fairy Glen. This footage is from July, and as you can tell, the skies opened above me and it was a veritable downpour. It was absolutely magical in the rain, although the rain was a little too heavy for the fairies to fly. These are beautiful hills that have been carved out by the wind and it gives them this distinct terraced look that brings a level of magic to the viewer. Also, the Fairy Glen is known for stone circles and cairns, which are the stacked and balanced stones that you often find at the tops of mountains or by rivers. So yes, the stone circles are man-made, allegedly, but that shouldn't deter you from visiting them. Stonehenge is also a man-made site, but there's still plenty to marvel at there as well. 
The fairy pools are naturally occurring, but the fairy glen is a little bit of both, naturally occurring and man-made, but still brimming with magic. The rain rolled in quickly and with a vengeance, but it actually helped drive away some of the more fair weather tourists afraid of a good soaking. In Scotland, there's really no such thing as bad weather, just bad choices in clothing and footwear. Expect the unexpected and keep an eye out for sky landmines. Those are the um, brown bits that are left behind by sheep that call this magical place their home. This is a rather large area to explore and a little bit tricky to walk through if the weather is as wet as it was this day. The ground is slick and muddy, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled for sky landmines, slippery sections in the paths, and of course, fairies. There are no traceable stories or sightings of fairies in this glen or by the fairy pools, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't keep watch for them while you're here. Now, just a quick note on the serious side. This site is a subject of a certain level of debate. The stones have obviously been moved by people to create standing stones and circles, and a lot of the locals dislike that the environment has been changed by humans as much as it has in recent years. That being said, in order to be a responsible meanderer, I'll leave you with this as guidance. Please keep to the paths, take no objects with you, and leave nothing behind. That includes rubbish, gum, cigarette butts, and coins, which have been spun into a good luck ritual that has really no basis in folklore or tradition. There's nothing wrong with visiting sites like this, but be considerate. This is someone's home, whether it's deer, sheep, birds, humans, or fairies. Keep it clean and don't move anything, please. And enjoy your time in the Fairy Glen. We're heading back onto the mainland for our next location. This site is called Clavicairns, and this is located near Inverness, just a quick drive from the battlefield at Culloden. As you now know, a cairn is a pile of stones, but cairns are used as trail markers, memorials, landmarks, and burial mounds. Here's a little archeological fun fact for you. When an archaeologist talks about how a site or an object was used for, and I quote, ritualistic purposes, it's usually just an intelligent way of saying that they have absolutely no idea its purpose or use. Okay, I'm going to stop giving away industry secrets and talk a little bit more about the site. This is managed by Historic Environment Scotland, which do a wonderful job at taking care of numerous sites around Scotland. There's always a certain degree of mystery surrounding cairns, but these were thought to be used as burial mounds, with a temple on the site as well. There are helpful plaques with information scattered around the site to give you an estimate of the range in time when they were believed to have been assembled, and also give you a peek into what Neolithic life was like on the mainland. Clavicairns also has those iconic standing stones seen in the ever-popular show Outlander, so this is a well-known spot to take the iconic photo of you touching the stones. Or you could try to go back in time to find your own Jamie or Claire, if you remember to bring a gem with you, that is. Scotland has so many magical sites that it's difficult for me to cut myself off and say that we're at the last one for this video but this is the last of just a few of the magical sites in Scotland. We're heading to Orkney to visit Happy Valley Park. Tucked into the hills in a largely agrarian area, this little hidden gem is a lovely walk through flowering fields, woodlands, and along a creek. This is a wonderful place to bring a book to read and sit by the stream and have the lulling sound of the water rushing by you to soothe your soul. Orkney as a whole is full of standing stones, cairns, Neolithic sites, and lots of Nordic and Celtic folklore, so it's actually challenging to find a site that doesn't leave you with a magical feeling. Happy Valley's garden was designed by a gentleman who lived on the property. When he passed well into his 90s, the locals decided to take care of the gardens in his stead. He planted a variety of beautiful flowers and trees, and if you visit in springtime, you can see the bluebells, lilies, budding trees, and plenty more. It's a little haven for nature lovers of all sorts. There have been fairy sightings here, even if they are just figurines. Keep a lookout for fairies of any kind while you're here. You never know what you might find. 
Before we part, here's the poem by Robert Louis Stevenson entitled The Flowers, while you enjoy these clips of Happy Valley. All the names I know from nurse, gardener's garters, shepherd's purse, bachelor's buttons, lady smock, and the lady hollyhock. Fairy places, fairy things, fairy woods where the wild bee wings, tiny trees for tiny dames, these must all be fairy names. Tiny woods below whose boughs shady fairies weave a house. Tiny treetops rose or thyme, where the braver fairies climb. Fair are grown-up people's trees, but the fairest woods are these. Where if I were not so tall, I should live for good and all. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you smiled today, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time we meander the gorgeous globe together. Bye bye